equivalent to 10.35 mole. Now, if we have 10.35 mole of hydrogen gas, every two moles of ammonia requires three mole of hydrogen gas. This is the conversion factor in the balanced chemical reaction equation. Moles of hydrogen gas will cancel out. That will give you the moles of ammonia. Okay. So this is a question where we combine the gas law equation uh, and the stock geometry together. Well, when you convert the volume into moles, and then you can figure out, uh, based on the stock geometry there, you can figure out how many moles of product you're supposed to get. And you will see this kind of question in your second quiz. Well, the second quiz is due on the day of the exam, which is next Tuesday. Okay. We'll give you questions there. We'll give you quantities of the gases in liters or milliliters, uh, uh, liters instead of moles. Okay. And uh, we ask you to do calculation, trying to find out how many moles, how many liters of, of the product you're supposed to get. So this equation, PV equals nRT, this equation is the key to link the number of moles to volume, to pressure, to temperature. This is something that's very important. This equation is something that you have to remember. You need to know this equation. Okay. So once you know this equation there, you can see the relationship there. For gas reactions, you can use the stoichiometry. You can figure out the number of moles using that equation. Once you figure out the number of moles there, then we go back to the dimensional analysis, identify the correct conversion factor based on the balanced chemical reaction equation, and you can quantify chemical reaction. And that's the ultimate goal. We need you to be able to do calculations, and we need you to be able to quantify chemical reactions. And that's what we're trying to do in this course. Whenever we have a calculation, um, uh, when, whenever we have a question, uh, uh, for, whenever we have a question asking you to do calculations there, and we're just trying to quantify uh, how much chemical is present, how much product, uh, product you're, you're supposed to get. Okay, so these seven questions pretty much are examples of things that you will encounter when you do calculations involving gas law. Individual gas law or ideal gas law, or even the density. Density of gases, the molar mass, the molar volume, those are the things that you do need to pay attention to. Okay. So, so far in uh, chapter five, we've been dealing with individual gases, pure gases. Okay. Now, more than often in reality, you're gonna be working with mixture of gases. Air is an example. 78% of air by volume is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen. There. So if you're talking about the property of air, you're talking about a mixture of oxygen gas and nitrogen gas there. Now, how do a mixture of gases behave compared to each individual gases? They're in terms of the pressure, the total pressure, the total volume, the total number of moles. And how does each, how much does each component contribute to the overall behavior of the mixture. So that's our next learning objective. Now I know we went through very quickly about the calculations that that are involved in the uh, uh, with the PV equals nRT. And I want you to make sure you take the time and practice this equation. This equation, one equation, you can have many different varieties there, a variety of different types of uh, questions there. So you need to know how to do all these questions there. And in your homework assignment in chapter five, we do give you quite a bit of exercise there. Okay. So you may have questions when you work on those problems there. The key issue there is that you pay attention to the unit of the quantities involved uh, given in the question. And make sure you plug in the quantity with the correct unit and so you end up with the correct, uh, correct answer. So the next learning objective, we're gonna study the behavior of the <coughs> mixture. If you have a mixture and we talk about the air pressure, air pressure is the pressure exerted by a mixture of nitrogen gas and, and uh, oxygen gas. Now, how does that total pressure relate to what we call partial pressure of each of the gases there? So in this one ATM air pressure, okay, we know some of the pressure comes from oxygen gas. Some of it comes from nitrogen gas. So how much does each, how much does each component in the mixture contribute to that total pressure of one ATM? And that is what this particular learning objective is all about. Using the Dalton's law of partial pressure, we need you to be able to calculate partial pressure for each of the components, each of the gases in the mixture. Okay? And we also need you to understand the concept of mole fraction. We can convert everything into mole. Uh, then if you have a total of, say, 
uh, uh, one mole of the mixture of gas, then 0.3 mole of them is, say, oxygen. 0.7 mole of them is, uh, uh, is nitrogen. You mix them together. Then the mole fraction for oxygen would be 0.3 divided by the total number of mole, one mole. And then the mole fraction for nitrogen in that case will be 0.7. Okay. So that's the uh, the idea of the mole fraction. We'll give you an equation how we derive uh, the uh, an expression of mole, fra mole fraction. What's the relationship between mole fraction and the partial pressure and the total pressure? So that's another equation that we want to uh, introduce. And again, this equation is still related to that PV equals nRT. Okay. So also we want you to be able to use Dalton's law of partial pressure and the correction of vapor pressure of water. And to calculate the partial pressure of gas, if you are collecting in the experiment there, for example, if you're trying to make some hydrogen gas, now, every time you deal with the gas chemicals there, and the issue of how to catch the gas and collect the gas is always um, uh, something that's very critical. If you have a leak, then the gas, once the moment the gas is produced, the gas will be going all over the place because gas molecules are in constant random motion. Okay. How do we collect the gas? Normally, in the laboratory there, if you produce hydrogen gas there, we try to direct the hydrogen gas into water. And then hydrogen gas, and some of it will dissolve in water, of course, and then you try to use a tube and produce the, the hydrogen gas being produced there, and direct it into water, you put a container on top of water there. So you're collecting the gas over the surface of water. Now water under normal condition is vaporizing. So what you collect, there. It's really not pure hydrogen gas. It's actually a mixture of hydrogen gas and a water vapor. So the total pressure inside that container there would be the pressure generated by the water vapor and whatever gas you're collecting there, a hydrogen gas for example. So how do you use, you have to make sure when you try to uh, calculate the partial pressure of the gas, you, only the gas that you collected, you have to take into consideration of the partial pressure, vapor pressure of water. So we need you to be able to do a calculation uh, and using an equation there and trying to subtract. And based on the relationship between the total pressure and partial pressure, we need you to be able to determine the partial pressure for the gas that you are collecting alone, not the gas the mixture, uh, the total pressure of the mixture, including the uh, vapor pressure of water. Okay. So looking at the mixture of gases there, air, dry air is a perfect example. We have 21% of oxygen by volume, by the way. When we talk about 21%, 78%, we're talking about for one liter of air, 21%, or 0 0.21, uh, 0 0.21 liter would be oxygen. Okay. 0.78 liter would be nitrogen. And then with 1% a trace amount of argon and uh, other gases there, they would carbon dioxide, if you will. Okay. And uh, so this is the composition of the dry air and percentage by volume. Okay. Now, when we talk about air pressure, we're talking about the air pressure generated by everything in this mixture. Okay. Now, how does each of the components in this mixture, how much does each of the components contribute to that total pressure? Here? Well, the Dalton's law of partial pressure says the partial pressure of a mixture adds up to the total pressure. So in this case, the if you have two different gases there, say nitrogen gas and, 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 uh, and uh, 